four incredible transfers, a massive improvement to our existing squad, a 100% pre-season. Still, Bayern battered us in the Super Cup. We have one month to go until this transfer window closes, and I am so not done. Stuart Ward himself said it. He hopes the players can keep their heads up and focus on the bigger picture, because it would be a disaster if that Bayern defeat affects us long term. Needless to say, neither of us are going to let that happen. The first chance we have to put this right is against Garching. They play in the German division Bavaria South, which I've never even heard of. Hopefully that bodes well. And after that, it's Bayer Leverkusen. Well, I must be honest, I expected a little more than a 3-0 victory, but I will absolutely take an Endrick hat-trick. We barely let Garching out of their own half. And it is fair to say that Stuart Ward rotated the team I would expect with the Leverkusen match in mind. We had Podlek in goal, Svenigsen and Steele playing as our fullbacks, Toth making his debut in midfield, possibly shortly before departing the club, and Balci and Onda as well in attacking midfield. That XG chart and that heat map might just be two of the most beautiful things I have seen in FM23. As I suspected though, that is Toth's last appearance for Borussia Dortmund. I was forced to accept an offer for him in the previous episode because of that pesky rule nine. So he is on his way to Leverkusen. We get seven million pound back in our budget straight away, which takes us up to 37 million. We also have a good 400 grand a week of wage budget to play with as well. I want to know, does Stuart Ward have any particular requests? Actually, yes. Uh, as, it, as it turns out, he, he, has, he has a few. So while our scouts go to work on the 15th of August, we are kicking off the Bundesliga against Bayer Leverkusen. Despite last year's victorious season, the board are only expecting us to qualify for the Champions League this year. But Stewart is hoping for a positive start. He thinks the team's developing well, they're working towards the right mentality and philosophy, and every match we play will help to develop that. And the media make us favourites. No pressure then, boys. It's Stuart Ward and his 4-2-3-1 vertical tiki-taka against Bayer Leverkusen's new manager, Vincent Company. We can expect a fluid counter-attacking style from him. Stuart might just have the edge in terms of managerial ability. As far as I'm concerned, this is the best lineup we could put out. Laksonen in goal, Saltor, Kurds, Rogan and Marquez at the back. McNish and Casada in defensive midfield with Wanna in that playmaker role. Stroikens and Doak on the wings and Endrick up front but it's not my choice. What will Stuart do? Well, he'll go and absolutely hammer them, that's what. 4-1 victory, 65% possession, an XG above three, 23 shots on goal. Another beautifully glorious heat map and XG table there. And look at that, I am a tactical genius, exactly the team that I suspected. And we absolutely absolutely took Leverkusen to the sword here. I mean, I was hoping we'd do well. What an opening goal from Marquez that was. My word. I was hoping we'd do well. I know that we've dramatically improved the team this season, but I did not expect this. Oh, an easy headed tap in there for Wanner. Just could this be the beginning of something really special? It was such a disappointment to lose the Bayern blooming Munich in that opening goal. Oh, another quality finish there from Benel. Substitute scoring a goal there. Lado playing another goal through for Benel. Oh, Endrick. That, that is quality. This team, this team could do special, special things this season. But we, we've got to defend a little bit better than that. Team Cohesion definitely needs a bit of work. Marcel Kurz was even man of the match against his former club. That makes me feel very good indeed. And we follow that victory up a week later with a 2-0 win away at Ingolstadt. Once again, we were absolutely dominant. Our XG was phenomenal. We pushed them right back into their own half. Look at this. Pretty much seven players whose average position was pushing towards Ingolstadt's defensive third. Exactly the same team as well. Why mess with a winning formula? Last season's man was Paul Wanner, but it's looking quite possible that Endrick 
could be the one to watch this year. That was a fantastic solo goal. And his second was equally just as good, to be perfectly honest. A beautiful pass from Bernal and an amazing finish. So we have about a week to go until the transfer window closes. We have one more match in August away at Wolfsburg. But what's not so good is that Gerard Rogan has sprained his knee ligaments and could be out for six weeks. I know he is a bit susceptible to injuries. After all, he did only make 25 appearances for us in the league last season. But that is a big miss. You can see from this pizza chart just what a quality central defender Rogan is. His progressive passes are fantastic, completion rate brilliant, and wins possession back so frequently. But when we've got club captain Kayan Duzdag as the backup, consistent, professional, enjoys big matches, I reckon we'll be okay. Or at least I thought we would. Here is quite an unexpected turn of events. Bayern Munich have made an offer for Jaden Bernal. Now this is a very interesting one. He's only made three substitute appearances this season. Last year, he played exceptionally well, but was another one who was struck down by injuries. I mean, nine goals, eight assists. That's 17 goal contributions in 24 matches. That is difficult to replace. But if things carry on as they are, it's just not going to get in the team. Stuart Ward makes him sixth choice right winger, fifth choice left winger and fourth choice striker. Quite frankly, I think I'd be mad to turn this offer down. So we will see how much we can negotiate this one for. Because I already have a replacement in mind. We have had a significant offer for Pavlo Zayats turned down by Leverkusen. He scored 17 goals for Leverkusen last year in 23 appearances and has been given an A plus rating by my scouts. Basically, he'd come in as our starting striker because I'm pretty sure we'd end up then playing Endrick on the wing. He's consistent, he relishes big matches, he's got great pace. I mean, seriously, look at this profile. He can't tackle, but he's a striker. He doesn't need to. 17 pace, 16 acceleration, 19 agility. 18 technique, 17 finishing. He's even got 14 strength and 13 jumping reach, so he's not too shabby in the air. So if we can get a big fee up front for Bernal, we might be able to activate his 86 million pound release clause and get him for a pretty much bargain price. Well, I reckon this looks like a pretty good deal. 23 and a half million up front, 37 on installments, total value for our fourth choice left winger 83 million he did say he wasn't interested in leaving for Bayern but we shall see I suspect the draw of the biggest club in Germany might become a little too hard to refuse in the meantime we've had our Champions League fixtures confirmed this is what it's all about this year as you know this is the competition I'm focusing on above all others we've drawn Celtic Ajax Genk Saloniki Villarreal Juve Atletico Madrid and Napoli. Those are some big fixtures at the end of the Champions League group stage. Hopefully by that stage, we'll have already put a load of points on the board. And rather wonderfully, we close out August with another victory, this time 2-1 away at Wolfsburg. The XG chart and heat map once again looking glorious. If we can continue this momentum, Tell you what, this team could do phenomenal things this season. I don't care that we conceded an early corner. That was a quality free kick from Wanner. And then Stroikens hitting the ball into the box. Doak. Oh, quality, quality cross there for Kurz. I think, to, was it a cross? Was it a shot? Who cares? We won 2-1. That's all that matters. And although Bayern win 5-0 away from home, they've dropped points already. So after three matches, we are one point clear of Bayern Munich. I will take that. Well, it is transfer deadline day, the final summer deadline day of the director of Moneyball in FM23. And for the first time in my career, I know exactly what we are doing on deadline day. Bernal is joining Bayern. And in return, we are signing the best striker in the whole of the Bundesliga. We've activated that 86 million pound release clause. There he is. Four star current ability, world class potential. Look at the strength of that starting 11 now. But here is proof, if we needed it, that things are not going to go all our way this season. We now have seven players 
in the Media Dream 11. Seven out of 11. And Bayern Munich are still odds on favourites for the Bundesliga. And right at the end of the window, 45 minutes left, I've got a Rule 9 offer. Svenigsen's guide price is up to 8.6 million. Leipzig have offered me 10.75. This is a massive concern. He's not one of my starters by any means, but 24 matches he played last season, he was a very reliable backup. I can only hope that Leipzig have left it just a little bit too late. Oh, and they have. They couldn't complete it on time. It's fallen through. Marvellous. So 333 million pounds spent. We still have a, an absolutely ridiculous amount of money in the bank though. And without a doubt, the best squad I have put together in this entire save. So let's get stuck in. Four months of football, including a load of Champions League matches. And we will be back in January, hopefully riding high in the Bundesliga, hopefully riding high in the Champions League, because that's where it is all riding this season. I don't care that the board want the quarterfinal as a minimum. I want the final. Let's see if we can get there, my excellent friends.